Very good. Well, welcome everybody to this wonderful event hosted by Doug Meetups. Um, we have a fantastic speaker, um, Mr. AJ Kaufman, going to be talking about unleashing business central APIs in, with C Sharp today. Uh, before we get started, though, I just wanted to welcome everybody and say thank you so much for coming and joining. My name is Liz Hallen. I am the vice president here at Dynamics User Group. And if you haven't heard of Doug before is what we like to call it. I just wanted to take a couple minutes and tell you a little bit about who we are and what we do. So we are a free community and we focus on the Microsoft Dynamics 365 products, Dynamics GP, as well as Power Platform. And our mission really is to provide as much free education, content, and networking that we possibly can to everyone in the community to really help them elevate themselves and their careers and really grow, grow as individuals. So I encourage you to sign up at dynamicsusergroup.com. Um, and we are probably most well known for Dynamics Con. That is the um, conference that we host. And Doug itself has been along for a very long time. Um, we started out with discussion forums back in 1995, and I'm sure AJ knows exactly all about that because I think he's been using them a long time. They were hosted by uh, an, a Navision MVP at the time. Um, and in the last three years, we now have full-time staff on board to really help us grow to the 42,000 community members that we have today. Um, around the globe, including all of you. So we do still have those online discussion forums, which are free to use. Um, great place to get some quick answers um, if you've got questions or even to share your own knowledge. As I mentioned, we are the host of Dynamics Con Virtual and Dynamics Con Live. Um, our next Dynamics Con Virtual event will be hosted in November of 2024. So a little ways out yet, um, but we're very excited to be able to bring that back to the community again. And we do have our Dynamics Con live event as well. Um, that's probably a little bit further than many of you would like to travel. <laughs> um, I'll talk a little bit about that in a bit. Um, we do have a very robust YouTube channel as well, which has over 700 um, videos of, all on product education, as well as recordings such as this one for some of our meetups as well. So if you haven't checked it out, um, please do so and get your free membership. If there's anybody on the call that happens to be in the US, we are going to be having some larger regional meetups, um, both in Ohio as well as in Atlanta. Um, Ohio actually was last week. And then next May, we will be hosting Dynamics Con Live in Denver, Colorado. And if you're able to join us for that, I do have a $100 off coupon code here for you. Um, to join us in person along with a thousand of your other community members. I am here for any questions that you might have. I'll drop my um, the website address and my email address in the chat. So thank you so much, uh, Francis, for allowing me to be here. And um, now I'm going to stop sharing and let um, AJ take it away. <laughs> All righty, then it's my turn, I guess. Let me start sharing my screen because this is all about sharing, I guess. Let me see if the, I can do that. You all should now see my screen. Is that correct? I can yes, see yes. it. Yes, it's Alrighty. really Nice. So a very sh short introduction from my side. I'm uh, my name is uh, Anne Jan Kaufman. I'm from the Netherlands um, and um, working in the IT industry for more than what is it? 35 years, I think, in total. Well, that's looks like I'm old. I just started as a young guy. Um, uh, I'm in the um, business central world since 2002 when it was just called Navision and sometimes I still call it Navision. Um, currently working as a freelance technical consultant and trainer 
uh, and also an MVP for business applications, is, uh, which just means that uh, the spare time I have, I also spend on well, things like this, sharing knowledge, because I just like that, uh, not to showcase how much I know, but to uh, share knowledge, because I believe that uh, when you share knowledge, it's uh, uh, multiplied and uh, you still have the same knowledge, but other people have it too. And that makes the community stronger. And that's what I uh, always uh, aim for. Um, in the Netherlands, we also have something called the Dutch Dynamics Community, and that is a local community. Um, that I started uh, 12, 13 years ago, where we have meetups uh, in, in person every uh, three months. Uh, we have about 150 to 200 uh, attendees each time, fully sponsored by uh, Dynamics Partners. All right, uh, well, you see my uh, whereabouts here, so if you want to send me a message, uh, feel free uh, to do so. Okay, so um, I've been asked to uh, to talk about uh, Business Central APIs. Well, that's kind of one of my uh, expertises uh, that I built up over the last uh, uh, couple of years. Um, and I've always been in the on, on the technical side of the product, always working with uh, uh, the code. Uh, but yeah, it seems that I had a. a, a last couple of years I liked uh, diving into the API stuff and uh, work out how all of that works. Um, and today we're going to talk about APIs and then more specifically how to uh, call APIs from the outside world. So that was the question I got and that's what I have prepared a little bit. Um, I don't have so many slides by the way. Um, if you know me then you probably know that I usually don't have uh, a lot of slides, maybe just a few, uh, because I like to dive into the code and um, just show you how it works rather than uh, having fancy slides. Uh, I like uh, live demos. Well, it could also backfire. Of it. Let's hope uh, it works today. So um, having said that, um, I want to start with um, uh, telling you a little bit how we can get access to Business Central uh, data from uh, C Sharp. And um, when I uh, when we had the first conversation, I also mentioned something about the HTTP client. You will see that, of course, but I want to start with um, the uh, old data client that is in uh, in C sharp um, and um, because the old data client in C sharp is making um well it could make your life a little bit more easier compared to the HTTP client I say could because it also has some limitations uh, as you will see but um, well, it actually is a, a nice way of uh, dealing with the uh, business central APIs. So what is the uh, old data client in, um, in, in C Sharp? Well, if we take a look at uh, the C Sharp old data client and we search for that on the internet, we of course get something called getting started with the old data client and I mean I can create a slide but hey it's here um, and the idea with the old data client is that you uh, can generate code that um, uh, connects to the old data uh, APIs and the only thing you have to do in your code is uh, use strong types like uh, I want to, um, uh, to have a list of customers and you don't have to create all the classes. You don't have to construct the URL uh, that uh, you're going to uh, call Business Central. Uh, you just say I want to have a list of customers uh, and, and that's it. Um, 
and then you can just loop through the list of customers. You can apply filters, you can apply um, uh, which, uh, you can specify which fields you want to see uh, to reduce JSON. Actually, everything that you can do with OData is possible. So um, that is very strong. And um, you even don't have to bother about the HTTP client, but um, there might be reasons to still do so to work with the HTTP client, but there is, uh, I, will, I will come to that later. So the old data client in C Sharp, um, we need to install that one on uh, Visual Studio. And you see that here, um, you need to install it using a tool. And let me open my demo application. It's actually here under extensions, and then you do manage extensions. And uh, there you search for the old data, and there you find old data connected service 2022 plus. You also find something called Unchase old data connected service. That is another tool from uh, a, a person who is not Microsoft related. Um, I've not tried out that one, but probably uh, works uh, fine as well. It might have some extra features that. Um, uh, the, the Microsoft code does not have, or this might work in a slightly different way. But you you click this one and you say, hey, I want to install it um, or download it. Like this one has already been downloaded, but if you uh, click on download, then um, uh, you get a message saying, hey, if you close Visual Studio, you will get the uh, OData connected service uh, installed. So after that, you can create a, a new app or new application. And uh, let me do that right away so you can see how that works because I already have an example here. So that is uh, not working from scratch. So let me create a new project, create a new project here. And then say, well, it's going to be console application 23. I'm afraid it's a console app. That's fine. Uh, console app. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, next. It's going to be .NET 6. It could also use .NET 7, of course, but they usually only take the long-term support languages. So I skip the, uh, the old versions. Or I go with the even ones. All right, so we're creating a new project in Visual Studio and he's opening it on my other screen. There it is. And we have a simple project. Now, uh, now we have installed the OData uh, client here and what, the, what we need to do to connect it to Business Central, um, we need to provide that OData client with information. Now we right click on the project and we uh, choose from this list in the add menu a service reference. And then we get something called here add service reference, but we don't see OData here. But if we cancel it, we see here other services, OData connected service. And that is actually the one that we were looking for. Um, now, something is uh, not really going to work here. So um, you need to specify, I'm not sure if we uh, can zoom in. I can't, hopefully it's readable. But uh, the thing is that you need to provide an address here. And uh, the address uh, that uh, could be something like this. Let me uh, get the address. Oh, it's not here. Um, let me open Postman because I have everything in there. But the address will be something like this. Uh, business Central. Dynamics.com slash um, and, and uh, um, uh, a tenant, and then say an, uh, an environment could be, okay, whatever, come on. Can you please go away? 
So for this, okay. And then uh, we provide a, uh, an environment name. So let's say it's going to be production uh, slash API slash v2.0 slash, and then very important, we need to have the metadata. The metadata is um, the uh, an XML document actually that uh, provides all the information, the input for uh, the OData uh, connection. However, if we try to do this, we will get an error message saying, sorry, uh, I cannot find it or um, it is you are not authorized. And let me, oops, this is BHTPS. No, still not found it. Uh, of course, it's going to be api.businesscentral.dynamics.com. Bad request. So it's not really working. Um, let me get an actual address that really works. So uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to get this one here because I can just copy the URL from this one. In this comments and there is the full address that I want to use. So let's say uh, we're going to use this one. This is a, a, a Docker container, but it works exactly the same as with Business Central Online. But what is important here is that we do not get the information because it says you are unauthorized. Business Central does not provide the metadata um, if you uh, as an uh, anonymous call, so uh, the metadata needs also to, you also need to authorize in order to get the metadata, and that is something that uh, this wizard does not support. It does not support you to uh, enter uh, credentials or uh, have an O. Yes, there's a request that you zoom in, maybe the screen. I this this one cannot be uh, zoomed in. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, let me see if I can do something like this. Zoom uh, magnifier. Can I use that one? No. How? Okay. Let's try if that one works. About this. Does this work? Yeah. Better. Much All right. Okay, thanks. Okay, I'm just not sure now how I can move around because. Okay, you can just unzoom and proceed. Maybe when you reach on the yep. code, you can zoom back. Uh, in. Okay. Uh, yeah, so on Zoom, you can always uh, zoom in yourself by pressing, I think, the control button and uh, using your scroll wheel on the mouse to zoom in. Okay. Um, so. What you could do is uh, to, you have two options actually to get around this issue that uh, you do, cannot authenticate, and it is uh, selecting uh, the option include custom HTTP headers, and then say, hey, I want you to uh, add uh, uh, an authorization header, and then uh, for example, bearer, and then an access token that uh, you have uh, got from Postman, for example. But an easier way, a way that I uh, am using myself, is just uh, getting it from um, the metadata call that I have here in Postman, and then uh, say here in Postman, save uh, this file, here the output, the response to file, and then uh, take that file as an input for the connection service. So uh, this is the input uh, for all the old data stuff and based on this XML document, it will create um, an old data uh, reference. So um, I already have done that. So this is my uh, my file and then I say finish. And it's going to create a service to my project and then I can start using it. it takes him just a few seconds to do that. It's creating some NuGet packages, and now I have something called. Oops, I don't want to do that. 
like this and then go to my program. Well, this is something you should be able to read. Um, I should add here something using Microsoft and then something strange is going to happen here. Using. Come on. Microsoft. Dot. Then we have nav instead of Business Central, and that's because the uh, metadata does not contain, contain the word Business Central, it has the uh, nav uh, keyword uh, being used. Well, um, now if I uh, create something, uh, let's say, uh, oops, uh, var uh, BC uh, for Business Central is uh, have um, and I need to provide a URL for my uh, um, nav so I provide something like here uh, var BC URI is new URI and then provide that same uh, string that I've been using this is my base URL this and then say this is my BC URI. Now I can do something like uh, uh, BC dot and then we see uh, accounts, we see customers, uh, we see uh, items, we see sales orders, etc. So what I could do for example is say var uh, sales orders equals bc dot sales orders and then i can say uh, for each our sales order in sales orders and then uh, whatever print uh, some some information uh, on on the console here in this case say uh, like uh, And then, for example, say sales order dot number and sales order dot customer name and customer number. Then I should have the data now, if I do console. Dot. Well, if I uh, try to do this um, and I run this code, it's going to uh, complain about authentication and also about uh, the company because this data is inside the company. So what it actually should provide is uh, tell them which company are we going to use um, that is part of the URL, could be part of the setting. Uh, let me get that company here. Let's just easier for me at this moment so get it from an example come on companies you can do this and there i have a company id oh it will be faster and next time it's just at this moment Everything is a little bit slow because it just rebooted my computer before the session. All right, so when I will run this, um, it's going to complain about authorization, and that is something that we need to fix um, in order to get um, this thing running. And I'm going to show you that it's actually complaining about authorization. Yeah, come on. There we go. Do it. Come on. Yeah, this is the right line. Hello world. And now it's trying to connect. And there we have the break on an error message. And then we see uh, unauthorized. So uh, that is a problem. 
And in order to solve that, it's actually uh, pretty simple. And I have that uh, in my other screen already uh, as an example. So here you see the same thing. It's just called context instead of BC. But on the context building a request event, I add some code and I say, hey, I want to have an authorization header and it's going to be this um, access token. Now this access, access token is actually not valid anymore. So I just need to copy my access token from here to make sure that that one is really working. Authorization. And I'm not saying that you should uh, uh, do it exactly the same uh, way, but what I'm saying is this is how it should work. And I will in a in next demo show you how to get this access token um, in a um, in a better way that uh, can refresh it every time you need it. So then uh, I will get uh, a list of uh, items. And on my list of items, I also tell him, hey, I want you to filter. So it's not just items, but also say where the item unit price is greater than 500. Then I only get a few items. And then um, it's creating automatically for me a URL with um, uh, the dollar filter in it. Oh, and then I loop through the items. And here I'm having that uh, same thing on sales orders. Well, um, let me run this one. Fingers crossed that my demo is still working. It should work. Tested this a couple of times. I expect uh, two or three items, I think, that if a unit price greater than 500, there we are. A unit price of 1,000, a unit price is 647 and 1,397. So uh, three items is very greater than 500 uh, unit price. So that's pretty easy. We don't have to construct the URLs ourselves. And when I continue, I have also a list of uh, sales orders with uh, the uh, customer number and uh, the customer name. OK, so using OData is pretty easy. However, there's one thing that does not really work. And that is um, something that I have. I don't, I don't know how to get around that. Um, and if you look at the code, it's going to be nice code that I'm going to write here. What I want to do is to create a new customer in exactly the same way. Um, there will be something like this uh, for customer is a new customer. I need to provide um, a thing uh, that's actually I was looking for. It's going to be context dot. Oops. I should not. Do context dot. Create. Then it was. Customer, customer, customer. Well, well, well. I had this one earlier. Hold on. I need to get into this one. Oh, data documentation. What I'm trying to do here is actually something you will find here in the documentation as well. Uh, this was the one, the person dot create person. So um, basic uh, create, read, update, delete operations. You can find all the documentation online um, on Microsoft Learn. So the thing I was actually looking for was um, customer dot create customer. There it is. And then I need to provide a new GUID. 
well, say uh, that is just uh, GUID.MT because that is um, something Microsoft will, a uh, business center will create for me and come on, give him some name uh, like this. Um, and then uh, the rest of the code would be, uh, yeah, context that represents uh, business central and then add Uh, to customers. I tell him add to customers this new customer that I have just created and then say context or save changes. And that will then uh, create a post to Business Central. Well, this is something that is going to fail. And the well, let, let us wait for him to fail and then I explain what's going on and then we will move to the HTTP client and show how that one is in this case the better choice. So let him start. There we go. And we get an error message and it says um, there is an error in the payload. Let's go to the details and not sure if I can do this, but I will copy this and show you the error in a notepad. So what I get is an error message saying uh, control balance due is read only. So what is the problem here? In um, Postman, I can demonstrate that. I get a list of customers and one of the fields in uh, the customers is the field um, balance due. Where is balance due? It's this one here. And balance due is in fact a flow field. Now what the OData client tries to do is it, it just creates a complete uh, JSON including all the fields and post that to the API and that is not going to work because when we uh, create a customer when we post a customer we cannot fill in all the fields if I would try to do this like here in a create customer come on I have an example here and this is exactly the same. So this is the type of um, uh, type of JSON that is being created. If we will try to do this, it's going to say, "Sorry, bad request. Control balance due is read only." Even the fact that it is zero doesn't matter. It should not be in the JSON. And for some reason. Uh, all data client uh, decides to add it. All right, so how can we solve that? Well, maybe with the all data client, I have not tried that uh, because I have a different way of dealing with things like this. So let's move on to my next demo, and that is about using the HTTP client. And that one is over here. Let me zoom in. Um, can you zoom in a little bit? Oh, there we go. Good. So um, here I am using an HTTP client and in this uh, situation, this is just a console app uh, we are looking at. The HTTP client is just a global variable inside the, uh, the class. I will come to that um, uh, in the final demo, what the best way is of dealing with HTTP client instances. But here in this case, I have just a global variable of type HTTP client. 
And uh, I have a function here with a couple of functions that is actually a complete demo where uh, it starts off with um, uh, letting you log in into a business central environment. Then it says, oh, thank you. Now I see um, uh, environments production and sandbox, for example. Um, select which environment you want to go into. Then it lists the companies. Then you um, after that it says, oh, uh, in this company I see this and this APIs. Which API do you want to execute? And you select, for example, customers or items, and it will then show you the results of that. There's a complete uh, demo. Um, so environment, company, choose the API, and then finally you can also decide how do you want to authenticate when calling the API. Um, is that the user or is that as a service to service authentication? Well, one of the things that happens in here is a function that is called initialize um, HTTP clients, and that is the one I'm now looking for. Uh, here we have it in its HTTP client. If the client is not initialized, then I want to create a new one. So instantiate HTTP client. I provide that one uh, with a base address. Now the thing with base address is that um, I provide him with a base URL. Um, if I uh, go to the base URL that looks like this, API business central dynamics .com. Um, By using a base URL, I can uh, already initialize the um, uh, HTTP client with the base URL and then every call that I make with that HTTP client is going to use a relative URL. So you ha only have to provide the base URL one time and then uh, a relative URL. So only the path that you want to call on the server uh, will be used in every call. But the HTTP client stays in memory as long as the program runs. Um, that is also for a reason. I will come to that uh, 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 in a couple of minutes. Of course, you don't have to specify a base address, but in that case, if you don't specify a base address, you need to specify the full URL, including the base, including the server name, etc., on every request. Then, um, in order to authenticate, um, I also always need to authenticate with um, OAuth when I'm calling Business Central online. And, and for that, I do have an authentication result here that is a, uh, coming from a standard C, uh, .NET library that I'm using here in C Sharp. And one of the properties on that one is uh, expires or of course it's never been um, uh, authenticated and it is no. And in that case, I say, well, uh, authenticate please. And authenticate is letting me log in as a user and then requesting the OAuth access token, which is of course well, not part of this session today, uh, how, how all of that works, but trust me, uh, this works. And then finally, I say, well, if uh, I did never authenticate before or the authentication is uh, the access token is uh, expired, then um, I re-authenticate and uh, I add the authorization header by, uh, well, uh, setting the bearer token with the new uh, access token. So initializing the HTTP client is basically uh, creating a new one, optionally setting an address and um, setting a uh, authorization header, which I do on the default request headers, because with a default request header, it will be reused on every uh, request that I do. You can also have request headers per request. That's fine, but then you need to specify them every time and well, uh, especially the uh, the authentication header is a header that you can just specify one time and then reuse it until the uh, access token is expired. So that's why I'm using the default request header uh, to just set it only when uh, the access token is um, uh, expired 
and therefore it is called default request header. It's added to every single request that I do with this HTTP client instance. All right, so um, there are some more properties that you could set here, like uh, client dot um, uh, timeout. Um, if you expect that business sensor is going to take its time uh, and you want to um, uh, have a longer timeout, um, you could uh, set that if you want to. Um, sometimes I set this one to, for example, uh, five minutes. Uh, some other properties um, that we can set is the response content buffer size. I, I actually never use that one. Um, so usually it's only the base address and occasionally a timeout. That's actually what I uh, set for the initialization. All right, so then when it is initialized, and well, this one is going to make some uh, calls. So the first one is get my business central environments. Let's dive into that one. Um, then um, I want to call Business Central using the HTTP client, and this is my relative path that I want to call on that base URL. Well, I provide my path, so here we have call Business Central. That one uh, calls to initialize, so the authorization header is uh, set and, and the instance is created if, if required. And then uh, what I do on the client is uh, I call the get um, uh, command. The get command, uh, in this case, get async. The client does have, uh, the HTTP client has functions for get, uh, like this, get uh, async or get a byte array or get a from JSON. I will come to from JSON in, uh, in a minute. Um, or get a stream or string, etc. But this is the, the, the get command as com uh, compared to the post command and uh, the patch uh, command that we have uh, and even the delete command. So that's other standard commands that we can use on the HTTP client, the standard HTTP commands that we also need for business central APIs. Um, there's an asynchronous method, so for that reason I use uh, result here. I could also, uh, if I have asynchronic um, uh, programming, I could use await, but in this case that's not going to work because this uh, code is not uh, using asynchronous uh, coding anyway. So um, I do a get on the path. The client has been initialized with the base address, so the path is added to the base address, and I want to get back the result in my response. Then I call ensure success status code, so checking um, if the response is actually uh, status HTTP status 200 or 201 or something in the 200 range. And then uh, if that is OK, I uh, know the Business Center will return um, uh, JSON. So that is actually what I get here. The uh, content, I read it as a string from the content. Um, I call that JSON, but it's actually what I return as a string. Now, um, then uh, what I do here is uh, I, I have created a simple class that represents uh, the JSON. So that is my uh, environments, uh, as you see here. Um, I will I, I will move on to another one, but uh, uh, environments is an example. But I want to actually go to. Um, the companies, sorry, the customers, because that is a, a little bit easier to understand. But it all works the same. You see a deserialize here, and you see it here, and etc. here. Now, this deserialize is going to uh, take the JSON, there's an input here, and deserializes that to this type that I specify here. Now, the problem with um, of the problem the challenge that, with, the challenge with um, uh, the JSON that comes back from uh, <laughs> Business Central is that when you get something 
it is uh, getting it as a um, as an array. Uh, by the way, can everybody mute, please? Somebody is not muted. Thank you. Okay, so I just unmuted myself now. Um, so in the JSON uh, that comes back from Business Central is always an array and every um, entity in the array is, is an object. So what I do is not dealing with uh, the JSON. What I do is I actually create a class uh, like this and this is my um, uh, representing the JSON. So on every class I say your JSON property name is being ID and number and display name. For that I need to have system.text.json.serialization uh, added. And when I have this combined I can use the JSON serialization and deserialization to turn a JSON into an object. Uh, much easier, of course, than dealing with the JSON directly. I only have to serialize and deserialize um, the uh, the properties, the uh, complete JSON. But what comes back from Business Central is not a single customer; it's a list of customers. So for that, I created another class, which is called Customers, which is the value compared that to um, this one here. This is this uh, this value, which is an array, and that array is represented here as a list of customer named value. And now the funny thing is, if I do it like this, I can just say, as you can see here in the code, um, deserialize, and then the name of that uh, class that I want to use. And for this, I uh, actually do have also uh, one few slides that I created. So uh, that was actually this one here. So what I do is I create a class with the properties for each field in the JSON. Then um, I map them to the property name and uh, I do the same for the value property for the list of customers. And then in the code, I can do get from JSON or get and then do serialization, but get from JSON, as you see here, is actually even faster. I can just say get from JSON, the type should be customers, and I want you to take the path v2.0, my environment name, etc, etc, up to the customer's API endpoint and get that result into my variable here. And then I can do something that is similar to what I demonstrated to you um, in the old data part. So um, this is a an, an, an very easy way to um, uh, to work, it is a little bit more work than generating the code with the OData client, uh, but you're in full control and yeah, you don't even have to uh, write less code or more code than uh, you did before. Um, so then we have here, I have that example, get from JSON. So the difference with this is that I don't have to call deserialize because I'm doing it directly. It's just a wrapper around deserialize um, the get from JSON. And then I can just run through it. Well, um, that also works for creating a customer. Uh, Creating a customer is just a matter of initializing a new customer. Tell him, and that is important, to ignore a field when you write the default. Meaning, if you, when you are serializing this object into JSON, 
I don't want you to take the fields to include the fields that do have their default value. So if there is a decimal field that is zero, do not include. If there is a text field that is empty, do not include it into the JSON. And that automatically leaves out fields like that customer due, oh sorry, balance due uh, uh, pro, uh, field. It just works. When writing default is a ignore condition that I add to the serials, uh, serializer options. Well, then uh, I tell him, hey, I want to, on the client, I want to post a customer to this URL, which is the path uh, that needs to be added to the base address. I want you to take the customer uh, object that I created here, include the options that I created here for a serialization and get back the results and well, give me an error message if um, something was wrong, but if it worked, tell me, hey, the customer was created and it got this customer number. Well, let's demonstrate this, that this one is actually working. Just need to be quick for my browser window. Should we do one? There we go. I can close that one. Okay, there we go. Give him a few seconds to load all of this. There we go. Hi, and I was, uh, he's asking me to log in. I say, yeah, that's fine. Authentication is complete. And OK, so I can now uh, pick an environment. So apparently in this um, uh, Azure tenant that I'm now logged into, he sees a production and a sandbox. Well, let's take production. There we have a Cronus USA. Before we continue, I want you to really see the customer list because we're going to create a customer and I want to demonstrate that there is actually currently uh, only the standard list of customers and nothing um, custom. Business Central is very fast today. Old. OK, come on. There we are, just uh, the standard uh, customers as we know it. There we go. All right, so um, yeah, I want to log in into the Cronus company. Now he asked me, hey, uh, select uh, an, an API route that is ASCs, but I, we take the V2, so that's number 13. Um, in the V2 APIs, this is the complete list of uh, APIs that he could find. So let's, uh, for example, take number uh, seven items and then uh, I want to log in as my logged in user and I get the first 10 items here. That's how I wrote it, not the full list, the first 10 items that he got out of um, the, the API. And going back to creating a customer, create the customer, there we go, number 40, DOG Kenya, so let's do F5 here. There he is, just create it. Um, but no problem with that uh, balanced due field. So I feel more in control by using this HTTP client method. Um, so the HTTP client uh, method is something that you need to keep in mind. An HTTP client is uh, a connects to Business Central, and here in this case, I my um, HTTP client is a static and stays the same. 
uh, during the whole process of this application. The, th uh, the reason for that is that the HTTP client opens a port and uh, keeps the port open for at least four minutes. Now imagine that you create a new instance of the HTTP client every time that you make a request. Then uh, he is not going to reuse an already open port. He's going to create a new HTTP client instance and that one does not have any open port, so it will just uh, get uh, another open port. And that means that if you do that uh, in a loop, you will probably, or you are at risk of running out of port numbers. It is a issue with the HTTP client that is also known as port exhaustion. And that is something that you need to be aware of. Um, HTTP client can just eat up uh, the number of open ports if uh, you don't handle the HTTP client in the correct way. Well, here I keep the HTTP client in memory for the whole duration of the program. So it's going to reuse any open port if it exists. Well, it exists for four minutes, more or less, and um, the, in, in, when I do a new request to the same server, the same base URL, in the four minutes, he's just going to reuse that already uh, open port. But you don't always have the HTTP client open. Uh, for example, uh, in an uh, Azure function, uh, you may call an Azure function and then uh, after that the code is going out of memory, but that open port still exists because the application on itself stays in memory. Just your code stops working. So in order to do that, there is um, uh, something else that you can do. And that is a real life scenario that I'm uh, showing you here. Um, this is an, uh, an Azure function that you are looking at. And in the Azure function, I have a um, class startup, which is um, coming from the function startup of the Azure function. And what I do here in the configure uh, function, I call services.addHttp client. And I can uh, add HTTP client do with a simple HTTP client, like uh, just get the standard HTTP client. Um, in this case, I even use something called business central clients. I will come to that in a, in a second. But the idea is that if you do this, then when a function starts, a new Azure function starts, then um, that new function, in this case, um, it is uh, here post back. I can provide the uh, the type HTTP client type that I want, and it will. So this is the constructor, I should say, of the class. And if I in the constructor uh, add the same type of what I have added here in the uh, services, I will get the same instance. And that is exactly what I want because now every time this class, postback class, is being created um, with this constructor, it gets automatically the instance of the client that is pre configured and alive. Well, pre configured here in this case means that I have created something that is called business central client. And the business central client is a, a separate class that I created that holds an HTTP client in the uh, global variables. And um, funny thing is that in this business central client when it's created, I have another HTTP client variable. And that is actually the link to this one. I say add an HTTP client of this type, then it's going to create this type for me. And 
passes along automatically. We call that um, a dependency injection. It's going to add that HTTP client for me, and I store it in a, a global variable for this class. I specify my base address, and then I have some other functions on the Business Central client to call Business Central. Um, and in this case, uh, it's going to uh, call a custom API that I created, and it gets some uh, client ID and secret, etc., from the configuration settings and not hard coded. Um, but furthermore, it's just doing exactly the same as in the uh, other example, or working in the same way. Um, so, yeah, this is something that. You need to get your head around the first time you do this in Azure Functions. You probably are struggling with it, but when you see the picture, um, and there's a lot of information about this, uh, honestly, uh, when you get a picture of it, it, it really makes a lot of sense. Dependency injection specifically for the HTTP client in Azure Functions. And by the way, that also works for uh, a non Azure Functions, just normal C Sharp applications. OK, so uh, I, I cannot run this one. Um, this real life scenario um, is, is uh, uh, running uh, for customers of my uh, and, and, and uh, yeah, it's something I cannot run here from from uh, my computer. This should run in uh, in Azure, of course. OK, um, I think. Or, well, it's time, <laughs> so uh, I should stop here. Uh, I hope you find this useful uh, and you got something out of it. And I would say, uh, well, let's open for questions. OK, OK. Uh, thank you, AJ, for that great session. And uh, it's been really deep. It's a it lot is. of code. <laughs> yeah with a lot of best uh, use cases for even querying or uh, connecting to our data and HTTP client. So I think uh, you can unmute and uh, or post the question on the chat and I'll be able to read for that. Uh, one question here on the chat is, will you share the slides with us? <laughs> <That's a chicken. laughs> yeah, so uh, these slides are actually taken from uh, the Business Central uh, Tech Days uh, slides that I uh, had in uh, June, and they are available for download uh, from BC Tech Days. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's actually part of another session that would not really dive into the HTTP client, but the slides are there. Um, just the same slide, so you can take it from there. Maybe the easiest way to to share the link. Maybe if you have the link, you can share that to yeah. the BC Tech. I will yeah. See if I can find that link. I think so. Uh, no, I should say BC Tech Days download. Hopefully, we can just find it here. Uh, is it in the archive? I hope so. There are the pictures. Okay. Blah, blah, blah. That's not what we're looking for. Oh, wait a second here. These were the sessions. And this was my session. No, this is actually not what we're looking for. Come on. I think it's on uh, Mibuso. There we should find the downloads. And Is this? Oh, they should be available here. After tech days, or is it? Ah, sorry, BC tech days. Hold on. 
be easy to take place. There we have the presentations. So on myboosel.com, there you can download the files and you'll find their API best practices. And the few slides that I showed you are part of this presentation. But the presentation I give today is actually only about those few slides and a lot deeper than I did at uh, Tech Days. Okay. Okay. Brilliant. Yeah, so brilliant. you yeah. can get it from webuso.com and then uh, on the BC Tech Days. Should I uh, just kindly share the link? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The link is now in the that, in huh? the chat. Okay. Fine. All right. So, so any questions? Yeah, 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 yeah. Someone else is asking about the recording. If it will be available, of course it will be available. I hope there is no issue with having this recording public, AJ, from your side. Yeah. Do you need something from me? No. Okay. okay. Just consent. Consent. Yeah, that's fine. Of course. <laughs> Data of course. protection. Yeah. By okay. Anyone means, yes. who would like to unmute and ask a question? There is no other question on the chat. <laughs> or oh, did I scare you? <laughs> for me, Sorry, I would like to learn a new way of consuming our data. Well, that's nice. That's actually uh, what I was aiming for, that you learn something. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, Good. a new way of consuming uh, or data, then. Sure, sure, Liz. Yeah, okay, on the YouTube channel, and then yeah, we'll share the link. I'll share the recording once we are done here. There's someone who had unmuted. Who was it? I just had someone unmute, and then there's no question. All right. Well, if there are no questions, um, okay. I'm sure there will be questions when people start uh, trying to use this. Yeah. Um, feel free to uh, to ping me, um, and I will be glad to uh, to help. There is there's a raise done from Davis. Maybe you okay. can just take it real quick. Davis. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Francis. So, uh, if there, may, maybe next time you could uh, take us through on how to consume soap. I didn't get the question. Can you repeat it, please? I'm saying, could we have a session next time or now we can be able to consume the soap now that at least now we know to consume uh, our data? Uh, I, I understand half of your question, so sorry for... Okay, okay, he's, he's saying, are we able to maybe consume soap with uh, the soap ah, protocol? Instead soap of now. protocol? Yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, theoretically, it should be possible because that is uh, it's a different type of connection that you need to create, which is a um, WCF connection. Uh, yes, it should be possible. It's a long time ago that I did that, to be honest. So my knowledge of that part is a little bit rusty. Um, but yes, as far as I know, it, it should be possible. But it's being deprecated, right? So is it a good practice? Uh, <laughs> Microsoft suggested that it will be deprecated in the future, but there is no date at the moment. And many, many integrations are still depending on uh, SOAP. So I think so will be around for another couple of years is my guess. But um, yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Microsoft announces in, in October, November, hey, uh, soap uh, is for another year or year and a half and then it's it's gone. Um, I, I think they monitor uh, how much soap is being used and uh, at some tipping point and say, OK, uh, now we see uh, let's use it. So let's just uh, ditch it and uh, uh, get rid of it. But no date at the moment. OK, OK. OK, there being no other question, thank you, AJ. We don't want to take more time with the members. Thank right. you guys for joining with over 31 attendees who have been consistent. We can maybe clap hands with reactions to AJ. And uh, <laughs> thank you for, for thank the you. presentation. I believe it's, is it the first time for you in to present to a Kenyan group? 
Uh, this is my first time to present for Kenya Group. Yes. Okay. Um, just uh, I wish my uh, my brother could uh, uh, see this because uh, he just returned from uh, Nairobi after being there for two years. Okay. Uh, but that was actually my link with uh, with Kenya. <laughs> but uh, yeah, great uh, to do this, guys. Uh, good luck. And uh, well, maybe see you around at one of the conferences or online. Okay, see you soon. A any okay. parting shots from Liz? Just a big thank you to everyone for being here and for um, Francis for bringing us all together and AJ for the excellent content. Thank you, Liz. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, bye bye. Okay. Bye, bye.